The video will cover through environmental impact assessment of Shanxi Gas Utilization Project and its main assessments on the project. We will go through the different stages of EA and provide critiques on the EA report. The proposed project is located in Shanxi province, which used to be a buffer between China and the Mongols in ancient times. Shanxi also experienced a semi-arid climate and is geographically surrounded by mountain ranges from the east to the west. However, Shanxi faces much environmental threats from the pollution. The project information document from World Bank states that China's fast economic development in the past three decades has relied heavily on coal consumption and the country is suffering from serious environmental pollution and its negative impacts. As a result, 15 large cities in northern China suffer from smoke. The document acknowledged that there is a need to speed up development of clean energy and shift towards a less coal-dominated economy. In order to meet production and people's demands, the national economic and social development of Shanxi province put forward a five-year plan to build a green, clean, and gas-filled Shanxi. The use of methane gas to produce heat and energy is predicted to decrease air pollution and increase air quality in the province. Since there is an abundance of coal and methane resources in Shanxi, the proposed project that includes two CHP, which stands for Combined Heat and Power Plants, and four pipeline networks were deemed beneficial. As a result, the proposed project is listed as one of the key 30 provincial level projects in China. The proposed project will intersect six counties, Baode, Qingxu, Xiyang, Xiangyuan, Tunliu, and Changzhi. The proponent of the CHP and pipeline project is Guoxin Energy Group. Guoxin is a state-owned company that deals with gas, coal transportation, and other trades. They are also known socially as one of the prestigious science academy in China. There are several stages of EA done by the Institute of Coal Chemistry of Chinese Academy of Sciences, who is the EA agency of the project. Throughout the EA report, it is difficult to differentiate between the different stages of screening, scoping, and assessment. The diagram under Environmental Assessment Procedure of World Bank Financed SGUP, does not specify a clear border between each stages. It is therefore assumed that each of the three stages are regarded as one according to the EA report. The screening is theoretically where the EA agency determines if the EA is required. Since the project is funded by World Bank, the EA report is to be submitted to the World Bank for review. The World Bank also classified the project in Category A, which places it as likely to have significant adverse environmental impacts. The screening is done by identifying environmental impact factors during each stage of construction and operation. The EA agency divides the impacts into two parts, based on the CHP plant and four pipeline networks. If there are significant impacts in each area, EA is required. This table lists the different impacts or benefits during the construction and operating phase of the CHP plant and pipelines. There are several problems with this data. Firstly, there is no indirect impacts mentioned. Table 1-4 lacks comprehensiveness and is vague in its description of impacts. The potential damages to natural or social environment does not include wildlife and does not specify or elaborate on what kind of impacts it will bring. It merely mentions that an impact is present. For example, under land occupation caused by temporary storage of building materials, the only impacts mentioned is impacts on land use and production. The scoping section of the EA measures the spatial scale of the project. It shows the different measurements of the CHP plants along with the proposed pipelines, and goes through the process of the CHP plant and pipelines during its operation. The scoping stage detailed more information regarding the different infrastructures that are to be built in the area. Although the scoping assessment made clear measurements of infrastructures that the project will entail, there is no clear delineation of how far reaching the impact is. For example, the project will affect nearby water body of the components in terms of its assessment scope on water environment. No elaboration is made regarding to what nearby is or why it is so. 
In fact, there is no explanation or clarification made for each statement given in the scope. The assessment stage provided quantitative and qualitative analysis on the baseline conditions and foreseeable impacts. Such data includes predictions on nitrogen oxide concentrations, waste pollution, and soil erosion after completion of the project. Although qualitative data are provided, little explanation is given as to the practical implications of such data. There is also no indications on why or how the data is received. It is also questionable that there are no wild plants or large animals existing close to the project site. There are lacking evidences to support that the engineering construction has good ecological, economic, and social benefits. Several questions that are left to be answered is, on what measure or standard is the CHP plan project feasible? And on what measure is the EA certain that vegetation and natural ecology will be restored in three years? The VEC table shows the several components of the environment that face an impact from the project. The body star icon indicates that significant impacts will be predicted. On the other hand, an unbolted star icon indicates moderate impacts, where a circle icon indicates only slight impact. A positive or negative symbol indicates the direction of impacts. The EA report states that there are both positive and negative significant impacts during the construction and operating phase of the project. It is interesting to note that the EA agency believes that there are positively significant impacts from the heat and power supply on social and ecological environment during the operational stage. However, several problems surface in this component. No indirect impacts are mentioned. Table 1 4 lacks comprehensiveness and speak. The potential damages to nature and social environment doesn't include wildlife and doesn't specify or elaborate on what kind of impact it will bring. It merely mentioned that an impact is present. Aside from the points shown here, they only explain social impacts listed under traffic migrant workers and living and commercial activities. The main consequence for the impacts are mostly described as temporary disruptions in traffic flow around village areas. However, most of the descriptions are prescriptions on what the project should do in light of the social impacts, like compensation to villagers by form of payment. However, what is the most interesting is on migrant workers. The description states that there are a large number of migrant construction workers, so the project organizer shall strengthen the team management, respect local customs, avoid the negative impact of migrant workers on local residents, including conflict between migrant workers and local residents, unlawful sexual intercourse and transmitted diseases. It is unclear as to what this might imply, but it seems out of place in the report, especially in regards to the point about unlawful sexual intercourse. Is the report suggesting that an impact may be due to social conflict caused by migrant workers? Public participation was conducted based on the requirements of World Bank. The report provides several tables to indicate the sub-projects such as CHP and pipeline networks. Public participation clearly states what was done during, before, and after in the EIA outline. The tables also illustrate the location of the meetings, investigators, as well as respondents. The activities and descriptions attempted to show what was happening during different timelines in different counties. The activities and descriptions involve meetings, group and individual interviews, household surveys, as well as questionnaires to the villages. The report uses activities or descriptions to collect suggestions and views from different groups of people such as the affected villages and local government solutions to mitigate the local impacts and reduce the discontent of the masses. Also, the report sums up the options and questions from the public and responds those questions to come up with some solutions for different sub-projects in different stages, including those before and after finalization of outlines for the EIA report. However, this part of the project does not come up with evidence so people cannot double check to see if the information is accurate or not. For example, on the information disclosed page, as the data is posted in the internet, a group was trying to see how the public consultation was conducted. The results of the surveys from the public is posted as a hyperlink in the information disclosure section, but none of them can be successfully opened. Sorry, page not found is displayed for all the links. This results in an unreliable feedback in the report. In fact, the report states that 100% of the people indicated their support to the sub-project. Therefore, the public participation lacks strong reference to back up their claims.
The EA report does mention improvements for the project design and implementation. One such example is under Public Awareness and Education Plan in page 208. It states that residential users of the gas pipeline will receive training on the use of gas safely. They will also receive guidance from company staff on handling emergency situations and on detecting gas leaks. Such methods help to improve public participation, albeit by passive means. Environmental management plan will be impl implemented during the construction and operational phase. It includes hiring an environmental protection commissioner as an overseer for environmental protection and an internal and external management system that supervise and guarantee environmental protection is done. Several recommendations were made for the construction phase to ensure limited effects on soil and water such as restoring grass on grassland and reducing acoustic noise by restricting working hours during the night. Steps are taken to prevent leakage from, of gas from gas plants and pipelines during the operation. These recommendations will improve the project and ensure environmental protection. However, there are many recommendations that are not directly relevant to the mitigation process and some details are very vague. Through this report, we discover the stakeholder of the project is a state-owned company. The Guoxin Group is a subsidiary of State Grid Corporation of China which is directly on the behalf of Chinese government. Simultaneously, the EA Conductor is a research institution of Chinese Academy of Science. The CAS is also directly dominated by State Council of PRC. Because the Conductor is not a third party in regards to the project, the EIA serves as a rubber stamping device rather than a real planning tool. Also, the EA report took about 5 months to complete which is really short for the scoping process. This leads to an inadequate and biased report at the end. Actually, the EIA industry has been in a decline in developing countries, and China is a typical example. Regarding to the development speed in contemporary China, for most cases, it is not possible to conduct a proper EA because the data collecting process takes a really long time. In this case, since the evidence are not sufficient for most data collection methods, it is hard to trust that the report didn't fix the collective result. China has a long history of imperial domination, and most civilians will default to the government rule in EA process. Especially in rural areas, it is not odd that villagers won't expect a clear process of public participation and information sharing. Therefore, it is likely that the so-called villager head survey in public participation represents the government's interest rather than the civilians. This kind of EA has even become a hidden rule in Chinese contexts. A more powerful and stronger China is standing on the international stage in recent decades. However, the weak legislation and formalism shows that China still has a long way to go in EA process.